Hey, I'm Kevin, and I want to have an application that helps me look up contacts real quick. Um, and I'm going to store those contacts in a separate file from the program itself, so I can always add to it um, or delete old contacts or make changes if necessary. In particular, I'm going to create that application using something called an f-stream. So if you want to learn how to use f-streams, go ahead and code with me. And so let me start off by pointing out that in order to do this, I need to import that fstream library from the standard library. Um, and so I'm going to pound include fstream. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an fstream variable. In this case, I'm going to call it a contacts reader. That's what its, its point is going to be able to look up um, this file right here that I called contacts that's in my project where you can see each line is formatted so that um, it has four of my family members, my mom, dad, my brother Scott, and sister Anne. Um, I've made up um, make-believe emails for them to protect their privacy from this video, but I want this application to be able to um, read one line at a time and say, Okay, am I trying to email my mom? Am I trying to email my dad? And whoever I specify, it will automatically look up what their email is. And so let's go back to main.cvp. And the first thing once I have created that contacts reader f stream is that I'm going to try to open up that file. So I'm going to say contacts reader dot open. And the first thing I provide as a parameter to open is uh, the file that I want to open. And so this particular file is called just contacts. And then it also requires a second parameter that says, in what way do you want to open it up? In this case, I want to open it up only for reading. I want to read in the information. I don't want to accidentally have my program mess up the stuff in that file. And so I'm going to, it's going to be read only. It's going to only read in. And so once I've said open, we need to get some kind of confirmation to make sure that that fstream was successful in opening it. It's possible that that file doesn't exist or there's some other problem that keeps us from um, successfully opening it. So first, let me check if um, that contacts reader dot is open. And if it's open, then I'm going to go through and read it. But if it doesn't open up successfully, I want to um, give an error message that says else see out contacts file cannot be opened. Oops, I need to put that outside of the quotes. OK, so now that is if it didn't work. But if it does work, what we want to do is be able to read this line a line at a time because that's how I'm structuring the format of this file. It actually, each line has two pieces of information. Um, you might see here, first is their name, and then a space, and then the email. And so I want to store those two bits of information separately so it's easy for me to identify, okay, is this line um, the person I'm looking for? And then if it's, the, if it's that match, then I want to grab the email. Well, let's go back to main and let's create some variables to keep track of that information. So I'm going to make a string that is um, the person's name. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call that contact name. And then I'm going to make another string that will store the email. So contact email. Okay, um, so I'm going to try to open that up and um, read, again, one line at a time, but I'm going to repeatedly go through it, so I want to loop. And so, particularly, I'm going to do while we've not reached the end of the file. So I want to go one line at a time, and we haven't quite reached it yet. So I'm going to say not uh, contacts reader dot EOF, and EOF is end of file. So while I'm not at the end of the file, I want to continue reading information. 
And so how we're going to read information is we're going to use that context reader and use it as an input that, you know, you're, we're using these chevrons to, uh, similar to how we use CN, um, but instead we're reading from the file. And so we're going to say, okay, context reader, we want to first read in the contact name, because if you remember, that's the first thing in, uh, on each line. And then the second thing on each line is the contact email. And so I'm going to read those two pieces of information, and I'm going to say, if our contact name matches who I'm looking for. So it looks, uh, you know, looks for a particular value. However, I haven't allowed the user to specify who I'm looking for. So let's add that to this program. Is Let's create a string and I'm gonna call it find contact. So that's the person that we're looking for. So let me give the user some interaction and say, who do you want to email? And then CN, that find contact. So that variable find contact will store who it is that I'm looking for and it'll allow me as the user to custom, you know, to change it each time I run the program. And so if that contact name that we're looking through in the file matches that variable, so find contact, then what I want to do is I want to say their email is, and then display out contact email. And in fact, once we found that person, we can stop with the loop. So if we might want to make this even more efficient is we can break out of it. So it won't continue looking through the whole thing. Um, and I also want um, to have a case where, let's say I search for someone who isn't in my contact list, that it's, it gives me an error message saying that it didn't find that person. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create another variable and I'm gonna keep a Boolean variable that says that I'm gonna call found and I'm gonna initialize it as false because I've not yet found that person. But when we have found that match where contact name is equal to contact, then what I'm gonna do is say found is equal to true, give it that true value. And then once that loop is over, uh, once I've gone through every single line that's available in that file, um, I'm gonna say if found is still false, then we're gonna print out that error message. Um, contact not found. And let me save that and let me run it to make sure it is doing what I anticipate. And so let's do a compilation here, G++ main.cpp. I want to use C++ 17 to run this. And I'm gonna run the program a.out. We didn't get any compilation errors. And so let's run it. And so it asks me, who do I want to email? Well, let's look at that contact. Let's pick up someone in the middle. Here, my brother Scott is somewhere in the middle. So it might be a little bit harder to find um, if we didn't implement this correctly. So let's look for Scott. And uh, it says their email is kevinsbrother at yahoo.com. Um, it looks like that's working pretty well. I'm gonna make one small formatting fix is I want an end line after that. Um, so it looks a little bit better so this prompt doesn't show up when the program's done uh, or right on that same line. Um, but let's save that and compile it again. And let's test it out with another user. Um, and so let's this time let's try my sister who was I believe the last person in the contacts. If we go back to that file, yeah, we can see Anne is the last person. 
And so let's try running it and searching for Ann. So who do you want to email? I want to email Ann. And it says that her email is kevinsister at gmail.com. So that indeed is the, the right email. But let's try running it one more time. And let's uh, go for a place where I'm searching for someone who is not in our contacts. So the possible matches are mom, dad, Scott, and Ann. Let's enter my friend John, who's not le yet in that program. And so let me go in here and say, I want to look for John. And it says contact not found. So it looks like this is working uh, correctly, where each time the F stream um, goes through this loop and does this line right here, as it's saying, we want to read first a string as the name and then a string as the email. And so if we go to the contacts, first thing that it's doing is, is reading this value. And then it sees that space and says, okay, now I'm on to the next string since we're just using those input chevrons. And we get that email. And then what we're doing is first looking at that string and say, does it match? And if not, let's, let's read um, let's loop again as long as we haven't reached the end of the file and um, we haven't found that match yet. And so let's keep on going down and let's repeat that process for the next line and the next line and the next line. And if, if we never find a match, eventually we're going to reach that EOF, the end of file. Now, end of file is not something, you, you notice this, this file doesn't actually sh say the word EOF in there, but it's kind of hidden from you as a user is every file has a marker in it that says, I've reached, you've reached the end of this file to pre prevent people from going into other memory that isn't related to this uh, particular file. One more thing I just remembered is I wanna scroll down and since I opened up this file right up here, we wanna make sure that we close our F stream as well. Um, so in other words, when our program's done using this file, we wanna make that, that file available if any other programs or the user themselves wanna directly edit that file. So we always wanna make sure that we close what we've opened. Um, and so where we wanna do that is after all of these, we've checked all these error messages and we're done reading from the file, we don't need to read anymore, we can, say that that contacts reader dot close. And that'll say, I'm done with the file. I don't have access to it anymore. Anybody else can use it if they want to. I hope this clarifies some beginner use of FStream and reading from files and good luck.